Hello and welcome to Three Questions With. Got my buddy Steve DeVries with us from Focal Point. Good morning, Steve. Welcome to the show. Thank you, sir. How are you doing today? I'm just living the dream. Steve, I happen to notice you're wearing the pink ribbon today. Let's talk a little bit about that. Why, why are you doing that? So, uh, great question. I appreciate it. Um, October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and I'm involved with the American Cancer Society as one of their participants in a program called Men Wear Pink. So our job is to raise funds for the American Cancer Society, uh, but the the campaign is kind of cool. They ask you to wear pink almost every day, and my, my goal has been to wear something pink every single day, and I have, and it's all about raising awareness. So awareness, uh, fundraising, and so you know it's very personal for me. My wife had breast cancer a couple of years ago. Luckily, it was detected early, so you know that's been taken care of. Everything's good there, uh, but you know, lots and lots of people have been impacted by breast cancer, whether they've had it, whether a loved one has had it. One in eight women in the United States gets breast cancer. And so when the American Cancer Society approached me and said, we would love for you to take part in this Men Wear Pink campaign, I, I couldn't say yes fast enough. So every single day I'm, I'm posting something online, whether it's me talking into the camera or posting a picture or some piece of information, it's all about building awareness for me. I want people uh, to take it seriously, take care of early detection, uh, make sure that you're getting mammograms if you're if it's age appropriate for you, uh, everything that you can do. And, and also to understand all of the great support systems that the American Cancer Society has in place. There's a lot of programs that I didn't know about when my wife was going through this. And so it's going to impact somebody at some point in time that we know. So wouldn't it be great if you knew about all these resources and if you knew that you had all this information available to you at your fingertips? So that's why I'm doing it. So, Steve, how do people make a donation? So yeah, all you have to do is find me on, on either LinkedIn or Facebook, and there's a link in every one of those posts. Um, when you post this video today, I'll go in, in the comments section and I will leave the link uh, for making a donation. I would really appreciate your consideration in that. Yep. So let's switch over to business. So yeah. you have a really strong manufacturing background. And I like that about you because I have zero manufacturing background. And it helps because, you know, through school, through business, I meet people in manufacturing and they're asking, like, what should I do? And honestly, Steve, I got nothing. I've never been there. I don't know anything about it. So let's talk a little bit about your experience in manufacturing and how you can help companies that are facing these roadblocks. Sure. So it, the one thing that I will say about manufacturing companies and, and people that work there, and I've, I've noticed it quite a bit since I've started my practice, is they really get tunnel vision when it comes to their business. There's not a lot of interaction outside of their of their business. And, and here's the reason why. And I, I know because I came from this world. You go to work every day and it's immediate like chaos because there's so much going on. You've got suppliers coming at you for things. You've got customers coming at you for things. By nature of manufacturing, you have a lot of people in your organization working and they all come at you, you know, needing things. So I'm speaking from a leadership role perspective. Sure. So you go to work every day and immediately you're, you're you know, I don't want to over dramatize it, but. Some days it can feel a little bit like a firestorm. You just got stuff coming at you every single day and you're talking to people nonstop if you're you know, an engaged leader like I was. And so at the end of the day, the last thing you want to do is talk to somebody new, <laughs> right? So you, you go in, you take care of business, you go home, and then you mentally prepare to do it all over again. So it really can be a challenging environment. Uh, as far as the activity goes, that's one thing, but the environment in terms of the, the various types of people and the different portions of the organization uh, is, is also challenging, especially for, for leaders in, in manufacturing. And this is the beauty of it for me, but you've got salespeople, you've got marketing people, you've got production people, you've got engineering and technical people, finance people, HR people, that whole group, right? They all think and behave differently. They all have different little specific things that they're responsible for, and they don't always align, right? And in terms of, of how I help them, I try to make sure that every portion of the organization has goals that are in alignment, right? So I work with the leadership to make sure that, 
hey, what you do impacts this group over here, right? And the reason that these two groups don't necessarily always see eye to eye is because they have different goals, they have differing, uh, different behavioral and communication styles. And so it's a lot. And how I help my clients is I help them sift through all of that and make that organization go. I always tell them, your company might be making money, but if your different departments and your different leaders of those departments aren't in alignment and you're not quite sure how to get there, you're leaving money on the table, I guarantee it. So in a nutshell, that's how I work with my manufacturing clients and help them. And I've been there and I, I understand what, what it is that they're going through. So yeah, that's that's what I do. I like that answer a lot because like you said, sometimes we just forget that we're all trying to get to the same goal, but while looking at it from our own set of eyes, how does this impact me? You know, in class, what's in it for me? You know, and that's what mm -hmm. everyone's looking at. You know, if we do this, how's it impacting me? And it's easy to just look at it through our own set of eyes without understanding, well, why is Steve like losing his mind over this? It's because <laughs> you're making so much more work for Steve without realizing you're even doing it because you're just thinking about yourself. So that's yeah. where the alignment piece comes in, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And you, you, you use the word me in there several times. So I want to, I want to talk about that for just a second. So the way you get any organization and in particular manufacturing, because they tend to be, uh, have such large headcounts is that taking that me approach as a leader, but looking at your people, right? So understanding that your people are thinking about what's in it for me, the way you're going to become successful is by understanding what the goals are of the key players on your team and helping them get there. It's not about barking orders. It's not about standing out front and taking credit for your team's work as a leader. It's about enabling the people below you that are in your organization to be successful. Help them get where they want to go. And then ultimately, what you should be thinking about is making yourself replaceable. If you're doing a good job as an executive, you are developing talent within your group, whatever, whatever team you're responsible for. And the way that you build loyalty, which drives retention, which is the hottest topic in business today, more so than revenue, by the way, mm -hmm. the number one concern amongst business leaders today is employee well, retention. So how do you retain your employees? You engage with them, right? You, you, you deal with the me factor by making sure that you're helping them get to where they want to go which ultimately gives you more options as a business leader, because now you've got a stable of people that are ready to take the next step, which then allows you to take the next step. It's this whole, it's like a reverse domino effect. You start at the, at, at, at the bottom of your organization, you develop it and you work it up so that everyone can rise up. And that's, that's another principle that I try and work with my clients on, particularly in manufacturing, because it's such a big organization. Makes sense. Steve, what's the best way for people to reach out to you? How can they learn more, my friend? Uh, you can email me, sdebris at focalpointcoaching.com. You can find me on LinkedIn, uh, Steve Debris uh, slash 7551. Um, that's the best way to do it. Or you can call me, 603-275, I'm sorry, 277-3288. Steve, I appreciate you taking a few minutes to call on the show. And as always, thanks for being my friend. Hey, my pleasure. Thank you, Kevin. I always appreciate you.